Hello everybody, it is Micah, and I am back with part 2 of my updated guide to Dune Scathe. And since we only have two more bosses to cover in this raid, I'm just going to jump right on into it. So after defeating the Proto Ultima Weapon, or the Succubus, but most likely the Proto Ultima Weapon, you're going to come upon Scathic. Now this queen amongst the Void Sand attacks fairly rapidly, and doesn't really give you too much time to react, as even her moves that have a telegraph also have a fairly quick casting time. Most of her abilities will also place a stacking debuff on you, meaning if you're struck, you're going to take more damage with each subsequent strike. The bright side of this whole encounter though, is that since most players, and most likely yourself, have outleveled it, she doesn't really quite have the bite that she once did. So after the tank pulls her, you should have just about enough time, depending on your job, to finish your opener before she does her first real attack, 30 thorns, where she's going to hit the tank multiple times with this flashy attack combo before going airborne briefly. When she comes back down, she's going to do a small AOE, which you can easily dodge with just a couple steps back. She's also going to have four other 30 attacks. 30 arrows, 30 sickles, 30 souls, and 30 cries. 30 arrows will begin with a simple round indicator on the ground that's going to target a random, usually ranged player. More indicators will then appear centered on that circle. Now, these indicators will have various shapes. Sometimes they will be a simple cross. Sometimes it will be more of a starburst. And then sometimes it will have a set of indicators that's going to move around it. Purple and black arrows will fall where that original circle was, and then blade-like weapons will slide across the floor. All you need to do to avoid taking any damage here is step outside of these indicators. She will also sometimes couple this with another attack called Particle Beam that will place these glowing glyphs on the ground with a large glowing orb slowly descending down upon it. You may actually remember this exact attack from World of Darkness, and you handle it exactly the same. One person needs to stand on each one of these glyphs to prevent the otherwise undodgeable raid-wide damage when that orb hits the ground. 30 souls is an undodgeable raid-wide AoE that healers basically just need to heal through. This can also happen back to back multiple times and is why, as a ranged, you should never be out in La La Land in this or really any other piece of content. You want to be in range of those AoE heals when there's this much damage going out. 30 sickles is fairly easy to handle. It begins with Skathic hitting everybody in melee range with an attack that will do minimal damage, but knock them all back. She's then going to rush across the arena, and when she does, you need to move away from her because she's going to follow this dash up with another AoE directly around her that's going to hit much, much harder. 30 Cries is just your typical attack indicated by a stack marker, so simply group together to split this damage. Whenever you see these ribbons emerge from her back, she's going to ready an attack called Shade Spin. Now, this attack has a telegraph, but it's so brief that it may as well not even exist. The way you want to dodge this is by actually watching Skathic herself. She's going to twist her back, either to the left or to the right, and you want to place yourself directly behind her back or in front of her front. When Shade Spin finishes casting, she's going to do damage directly to her left and her right. Now, I should note, the targeting circle below her will not help you here. You need to look to see where her torso is pointed and then be directly in front or behind of it. She will also use these ribbons for another attack called Shade Thrust. So for this one, she's going to turn to a random player and this large circle is going to appear behind her. Her ribbons will also reach out in front like they're grasping for something. When she finishes casting, multiple ribbons are going to fly out of that circle in a straight line, doing damage to anyone in their path. Now, there's no indicator for this ability. You simply need to watch to see where she's facing so you can move out so you're not directly in front of her. 
Shadow Lynx is an ability that will begin with the floor flashing red and leaving behind a purplish miasma. Now if you move at all while this miasma is on the floor, you're going to be marked with what looks like a portal beneath you that has these hands reaching out from it. These hands are going to do damage over time and dramatically decrease your movement speed, making doing any positionals or dodging any attacks nearly impossible. So when the floor starts to flash red, just don't move at all until the miasma disappears. Luckily, it will only last a few seconds. One attack that's commonly skipped these days, so you may not always see it, is Shadow Limbs. This will cause these giant hand-like adds to spawn and tether themselves to a random player. If you're the person who gets tethered, you want to turn toward the Shadow Limb so you're staring directly at it, because that's going to freeze it in place and allow the party to easily kill it. If you do not face it or you try to run away from it, it's going to rush toward you really quickly. And when it reaches you, it's going to instantly kill you before tethering itself to another player. When this red proximity marker appears, you want to move as far away from it as possible. Because after a few seconds, an ad named Kanla is going to drop down from the sky doing unavoidable raid wide damage. And that damage can get quite high and potentially deadly if you're standing too close to that indicator. After Kanla lands, a tank will need to run up and grab him and keep him as far away from Skathic as possible, and everybody else wants to turn their focus on DPSing him down. If you do not kill him fast enough, he will do a raid-wide AoE that's gonna wipe the raid. Fortunately, he will go down quite quickly these days. If you are marked by this red and black indicator, you want to move as far away from the party as possible and just keep running. These large black orbs are going to begin falling out of the sky, following you wherever you go, striking the ground where you were standing, doing massive amounts of damage. And they're also going to knock back anybody caught in their path. Getting hit by just two of these orbs could potentially mean your death. And finally, the last thing to discuss when it comes to Skathic is her ad phase, which will happen when she's roughly around 40 to 50% health. So when this phase begins, Skathic is going to move to the center of the arena and wrap herself in a cocoon. Small imps called Shadow Court Jesters will appear and begin doing some pretty standard attacks. Now, these imps go down incredibly fast, and after they do, three Chimera Poppets will appear. Finally, after they're dead, a Shadow Court Hound will appear along with more Jesters. So none of these adds have anything that really requires any special attention, simply DPS them all down. But while they're spawning, the aforementioned Particle Beam Glyphs will also be spawning. So you're going to want to stand in them to prevent the otherwise unavoidable damage. Finally, when all the adds are dead, Skathic will break free and do a raid-wide AoE called Blinding Shadow that will do a fair amount of unavoidable damage. And with that, Skathic is down and you can move on to Diablos. And Diablos is actually a two-part fight with a very clear transition between them. And if the raid wipes after that transition, the fight will continue from the second phase. The first thing you need to watch out for when it comes to Diablos is his gaze attack called Nightmare. Now this attack will be indicated, just like most other gaze attacks, by a giant glowing red eye, and it will place anybody it hits to sleep, leaving them unable to dodge any subsequent attacks, and can be avoided by simply turning away from the boss. Ultimate Terror is an AoE directly around Diablos that has no indicator outside of the casting animation, and of course, the casting bar. This attack will do a large chunk of damage in a donut shape around Diablos. So to avoid this, you want to stack either directly on top of him or run far away from him. If you get hit, it will also add a stack of curse which will lower all your stats and attributes. Throughout the fight, Diablos will also summon death gates. 
when these death gates appear, they're immediately going to begin summoning ads of their own with an ability named Void Call. You want to DPS them down quickly to avoid having to deal with the ads. When Diablos moves to the center of the arena, reaches his hand toward the sky, he's going to begin casting Runus Omen, which is going to summon this large black orb above him. And when he finishes casting, he's going to slam this orb into the ground, doing unavoidable raid-wide damage. So everybody needs to move into the center of the arena for shields and heals. And the last thing you want to watch out for in this phase is Night Terrors, which will mark a player with the standard stack indicator. And you should know what to do by now with this stack together to split the damage. When his phase transitions, Diablos is going to fly out of the arena and summon a large life gate, which you need to begin DPSing down. It's going to replenish its health multiple times, but you just need to keep at it or the raid will wipe. Death gates are also going to appear during this time, so take them out as quickly as you can because you really don't want to deal with adds in this phase. Once the life gate's destroyed, Diablos is going to absorb Skathic, whose body is still laying on the floor where you killed her. When he does this, the second phase of the fight will begin. And not only will Diablos have all of his abilities, with a few new ones, but he's also going to gain all of Skathic's attacks as well. And those attacks are all going to have greater potency. Diablos begins this phase with a really strong buff that's going to make him immune to all damage and give him a 100% crit hit rate, boosting his damage dramatically. The first new attack you're going to see is his tank buster, Hollow Kamasado. Now, he's going to spam this and Skathic's attack, Shade Thrust. And while he has this buff, both of these attacks are going to be incredible incredibly dangerous, so you really need to take care. Once Diablos begins taking damage is when the real fight begins. He's going to be throwing out all the aforementioned attacks, both his and Skathic's, and this fight is going to be incredibly busy. There's always going to be something, to, multiple things in fact to dodge, and multiple things to look out for. His auto attacks also cause a bleed effect, so whoever is tanking is going to be taking a steady flow of damage. So healers, you need to keep an extra eye on the tank's health. Now I'm not going to cover all the abilities again, unless they were changed to the point of needing to be handled differently. Just know, they're all going to hit harder. The attacks I'm going to focus on are the new ones that you're going to see during this phase, like Hollow Knight. This attack will mark one player with both a stack indicator and a big red eye gaze attack indicator. To handle this, you want to stack on the marked person to split the damage, but you also want to be facing away from that person to avoid the gaze attack. If you're the person who's marked, the best way for you to handle this is to move directly behind Diablos so the melee are in between you and him. This way, they can all keep attacking the boss while their backs are turned to you to avoid the gaze attack. Anyone facing the marked person will be inflicted with a status effect called Hysteria, causing them to lose control of their character and potentially running face first into any one of the number of attacks that could be going on at the moment. Pavorinanis, which is Latin, by the way, for either empty or hollow fear, I knew learning Latin would come in handy someday, will cause unavoidable raid-wide AoE damage, so be sure to be in range for those AoE heals. Earthshaker will mark multiple players with this overhead marker. Now this is both an AoE and a proximity attack. If you're marked, you're going to want to move away from Diablos to reduce the amount of unavoidable damage that you're going to take from it. But you also want to move away from anybody else who has this mark. When it fires off, it's going to do cone-shaped AoE damage originating at Diablos. And if you're standing too close to another marked player, those cones are going to overlap, doing a potentially fatal amount of damage to anyone caught inside, including you and the other marked player. 
Shadow spheres will also appear around the outer edge of the arena and move slowly in a straight line to the other side before disappearing. If you get too close to one of these orbs, it's going to explode doing damage and knocking you back a fairly good distance. And if you're unlucky, and I've seen this multiple times, <laughs> heck, this has happened to me multiple times, you're going to be knocked into another sphere, and then another, and then another, kind of like a Final Fantasy XIV pinball game of sorts, until you just fall over dead. It's actually kind of funny to watch. And that's all there really is for new abilities in this phase. But before I end, there's a few abilities from previous phases in the Scathic fight that were changed slightly that I want to discuss. Death Gates will now be accompanied by a Diabolic Gate. You cannot DPS this gate down. Instead, a handful of players need to run toward it into the miasma that surrounds it. And when you do, it's gonna pull you into a pocket dimension where you need to kill a weakened version of the ad that would have otherwise spawned before that pocket dimension collapses in on itself, killing whoever is inside. Nightmare is now gonna be called Hollow Nightmare and instead of inflicting sleep on anybody it hits, is gonna inflict doom on anyone it hits. This doom can be soonered off by a healer, but you just need to turn around to avoid this, just like you did before. Particle beams are now gonna include a larger glyph in the center of the arena. One person can still stand in the glyphs around the outside, just like they did before but multiple people need to stack in the center glyph to split the damage of that one. If that center one is not mitigated by a group of people, it's gonna do really high raid-wide damage. And speaking of really high raid-wide damage, finally we come to Runus Omen, which is now gonna be called Hollow Omen, and will do high raid-wide damage just like it did before. This time, however, Diablos is going to follow it with an ability called Double Edge. Now, Double Edge will put a buff on Diablos that's going to increase his outgoing damage for the rest of the battle, but it's also going to give him a bleed effect. So Diablos will at this point start taking a steady flow of damage himself. And with that, you're done with the final boss of Doom Scathe. Congratulations! This is potentially, if you're a new player, one of the busiest raids yet. Notice I say yet, because it really does get busier from here on out. But that's a completely different guide for a completely different day. If you have any questions or you need more explanation on something, feel free to ask me in the comments below. And if this updated guide was at all helpful, I hope you drop me a like and subscribe for more. You can also follow me on Twitter, which is linked in the description. But as per the usual, it has been a hoot. Until next time, have fun.